Dagenham and Redbridge are in their seventh straight season in the National League, England's fifth tier. And according to the game, they have some of the worst training and youth facilities in the game, as well as very low junior coaching and youth recruitment. Today, that all changes, as using the in-game editor, we're going to give them perfect facilities and see if this can act as a great baseline for them to progress up the National League and into the Football League, and hopefully all the way up to the Premier League. With these perfect facilities, hopefully what we're going to see is players to develop very quickly, and some fantastic youth prospects come through their youth academy to help propel the team forward by either playing really well for Dagenham or being sold on for big money so they can reinvest back into their squad. Now all that's left to do is go on holiday to simulate the game and find out what happens to Dagenham. So first of all, let's jump five years into the future to see how Dagenham have got on initially. And as we can see in game right now, Dagenham are currently fourth in League Two, which is not bad going at all. Looking at their historical graph, they finished seventh in season one in the National League, dropped to 13th the season afterwards, then won the league in season three. Their first season in League Two, they finished 18th. And this past season, they find themselves fourth in League Two, although they lost in the playoffs. So not bad going. It looks pretty promising so far. Now, over time in Football Manager, as technology progresses, training facilities do downgrade just naturally over time and five years in the future you can see that facilities have gone down from 20 out of 20 to 19 out of 20 which is not bad they've still got top quality facilities now personally I think we can see that these facilities have worked really well for Dagenham already as you can see they are traditionally a sort of mid-table team in the National League uh, their first season was of course mid-table then they won the league and have very quickly become a promotion candidate in League Two so I feel like the facilities have had a really big positive impact on the club. Now in English football, there are different levels of youth categories depending on how good your facilities are. I think it goes from level one down to level four. And interestingly, at the very end of season one, Dagenham improved their youth category to category one, which is the very best. As you can see though, a season later, they dropped it to category two before a year afterwards, going back to category one, and then two years later, going back down to category two. So it is quite expensive to run a category one youth facility. So the money must be a big issue for Accrington. So maybe as a, as a downside to all of this, they are running out of cash because they're trying to fund a really impressive youth system. And actually, if we look at the club's finances, they are currently in debt right now by minus 40, 428,000 pounds, actually half a million. That's quite significant to be fair. And we're currently in 20, 27 and they've just lowered their category to category two so obviously this is having quite a big impact in fact i want to find out so i'm making myself the manager right now so i can see all of this yes as you can see their biggest expenditure this season is the youth setup 2.1 million into that uh, the season before that was 2.1 million as well so Obviously, a Category 1 youth facility is ridiculously expensive. But it's clearly working. Here are their youth candidates for this past season, and my word, it's a very good intake. Insanely good intake. This looks to be their best player from the intake, and obviously he's not there just yet, but looks very, very promising, I must say. Interestingly, though, Dagenham don't seem to have an under-21 or under-18 team. So literally every single player is in their first team, and it's massive. But look at all of these five-star potential players that they've got, most of them being very young. This guy, for example, came through the youth system. So they are producing some insanely good players. And this past season made £1.8 million in transfers, but that is still not funding their youth facilities. Obviously, it costs £2.1 to fund it, which is why they've now dropped it to Category 2. So this has been a really eye-opening start to the experiment and showing the pros and cons of these massive facilities at a non-league club. But let's jump to season 15 now, where Dagenham are 16th in the championship. My word, they're doing well. And look at this graph. It's a beautiful upward graph. So last time we checked in, Dagenham were fourth in League Two. The season afterwards, they won the title and then they spent a good few years progressing through League One. And then last season in season 14, they won League One. And this was their first season in the championship where they've come 16th, which is pretty respectable, I must say, having a look at that. 56 points on the board. I'd be happy if I was Dagenham. And I think we have to say these facilities have been a huge success for Dagenham. In real life, their highest ever finish was seventh in League Two in the 2009-2010 season. Now, with these facilities, they're up to 16th in the championship. It has to be seen as a success. Now, looking at the facilities tab, they've not made any upgrades to the facilities. So I can only assume that they are still decreasing because... That is just how it works in Football Manager. But down to 17 for youth and training facilities. Although junior coaching and youth recruitment are still up at 20. So a slow drop here in the facilities. They're not quite the very best in the world right now. But if we look at the finances, 
okay, they're pretty healthy financially. In fact, that's 10 million pounds in the bank account. So they must have made some pretty decent sales along the way to get that sort of money. I guess championship TV money does help out a little bit, but they've not really got the money to keep up to date with the very, very top facilities. So it makes sense they've not really invested heavily into them just yet to get them back up to 20 out of 20. They've had a ton of different owners though through the years, uh, loads of different people selling and buying the club. And interestingly, Clive Nates fails in takeover bid. In real life, Clive Nates is the Lincoln City chairman. Clive, what are you doing, mate? Annoyingly, looking on the Landmarks tab and then going down to Other, this is where we see how the youth categories have been improved or decreased. It also includes the appointments of captains, which is a bit frustrating, but I don't care about captains. I want to know how the youth categories are looking, and right now, they've gone to a Category 1 very recently, having dropped to Category 2 back in 2030. So they had six years as a Category 2 youth facility, they're now back up to Category 1. How has this affected things? Now, once again, having a quick look at the finances of Dagenham, uh, for this past month, the youth setup cost them just under half a million pounds, whereas wages have now overtaken it as the biggest expenditure at the club. Uh, for whatever reason, this season is ticked over already, so we can't see the, the exact figures for this season. But last season, a Category 1 club cost them £5.4 million to run, which is very expensive. But as you can see, they're now turning that into a profit. Last season, they sold 12 million pounds worth of players. Although looking at the actual transfer tab, it says 4.6 million pounds out. Uh, most of it being brought in by this guy sold to Middlesbrough. Uh, it does say it could potentially rise to 12 and a half million pounds. It's 3.9 up front. And the cost so far is 7.25. So I guess they've made a fairly nice chunk of money off that. Uh, but this guy clearly was a great prospect for them at 21 years old, has moved on to Middlesbrough, does look very good. Looking through a past few seasons, uh, eight million pounds the season before that, nine million pounds there, four million pounds there, four million pounds there, nine million pounds there in 31, 32. So yeah, they're pumping out youth prospects and selling them on for a lot of money. Interestingly though, they still don't have a youth team, which is bizarre, but the youth candidates, as you can see, once again, uh, really decent with some five-star potential players in there. And again, looking at the team in terms of potential ability, there are a ton of five-star potential players in there. Um, and I'm sure a lot of these guys will get sold on for big money. Jumping forward once again now to season 30, let's see where Dagenham have ended up and they are still in the championship, 11th place this past season, although did drop down to League One a couple of times in the previous 15 years or so. Um, you can see they bounce back up every time immediately, finishing second in 2040-41 and in the previous season winning League One as well. Uh, they have finished as high as fourth in the championships. They have made the championship playoffs a few times, just haven't quite had enough about them to get to the Premier League. Interestingly though, in the past 15 years or so, you can see that the stadium has been expanded a few times and then they've moved to a brand new stadium, the John Still Arena. You love to see it. And then in 2050, the club youth setup scrapped. So that suggests to me at some point they had a youth team and then they got rid of it again. But they have upgraded facilities finally, obviously over the past 30 seasons, they have decreased a little bit and they've upgraded them once again. Whoa, hold on, what's happened here? Training facilities are now at four. That seems very bizarre. How has that gone down? Why has it gone down? There's nothing here that suggests it got massively decreased. And I can't see anything else here that suggests that things went bad. Unless when they scrapped the youth setup, it just ruined their training facilities somehow. Basically, I've got an autosave going for every five seasons. So we'll go back to season 45 and see if things are normal there. So in season 25, the facilities are 15 and 16. So at some point between season 25 and 30, the facilities get broken and because we've got five years save files we don't really know why but i think it's got to be linked to the scrapping of the youth team somehow that's the only thing that makes sense in my head as to why it suddenly just drops all the way to four again i'll make myself the manager of dagnum in season 25 um and they have no youth team there so for me either there's some sort of weird bug where they get a youth team then get rid of it and it just trashes the facilities or maybe that's just what happens in football manager i don't know but we can't properly explain it because we only have five year save files not yearly save files um, and it happens somewhere between season 25 and 30 where facilities just drop like a stone. It's got to be linked to the club youth setup being scrapped. But this is actually quite a nice twist in the experiment. I think we leave it at four out of 20 and see where Dagenham go over the next 20 years. My prediction is they're gonna drop like a stone now. I think they were carried by the facilities because they could develop players really well. Now they've got terrible facilities, they will not be able to develop players nearly as well as before, which means that players won't be as good 
it means that other players won't want to join the club because the facilities are terrible. And I think a lot of their youth prospects will just hit a wall and not get as far as they should do in terms of their development. So I think what we'll see here is Dagenham dropping like a stone. It's a nice twist. Let's see what happens. And so jumping forward into season 50, that prediction has come true. As you can see, Dagenham now a League 2 team. They've come third in League 2 this past season, so actually have got promoted back to League 1. But as you can see, they have dropped with their facilities being nowhere near as good as they were. Saying that, their facilities are now back up to 14 out of 20, so they have put a lot of money into it to get them back to where they should be. But it has come at a big financial cost. They're back now in debt. And obviously it's come at a cost in terms of the league position as well as they drop down as they've put money into the facilities as opposed to the playing squad. May they've been unlucky as well because they've got pretty good facilities again now, but I don't know. It, things haven't gone well the past 20 years. Ah, interestingly, they really put in the facility upgrades in the late 2050s, but we're in the 2070s now. They've not put any upgrades in for decades. And once again, they are bouncing between Category 2 and Category 1 youth facilities. And they've still had a ton of takeovers and promotions from within uh, for the club ownership. So loads of different owners throughout the years. So we last saw them come 11th in the championship. Uh, they then got relegated a couple of seasons afterwards, then won League 1, relegated again and then have just become a League One stalwart. Uh, playoffs quite a few times to be fair, but eventually dropped down the table and then they're now back in League Two, although third place gets promotion, so they're back in League One for next season. Wow, interestingly, they're not putting nearly as much money into the youth setup anymore. The past month was £64,000, and last season, only £1.7 million. I say only £1.7 million. That's a lot of money still, but nowhere near the amount of money they were chucking in at their heyday. Wages are way lower than they were a few years ago in the Championship as well, and interestingly, their biggest expenditure now is loan repayments and interest. Oh my word, they've got £45 million worth worth of bank loans. What they've needed this money for, I don't know, but that's extraordinary. Also, player sales are non-existent in terms of what they used to be. Uh, £900,000 there in players sold last season. The biggest increase of money actually was the gate receipts, 4.2 million. So I guess this means they're not producing as many good players anymore. So let's flick through the past few years of transfers. £700,000 worth of players sold in this past season. 1.3 million the season before that, 1.3 million. 850k, 1.8 million, 125k, 350k, 3.2 million there in 64-65, but this is nowhere near what they had in previous years. 59-60 was their last big year of player sales. Uh, they sold a player for £5 million, another player for £3 million, 11.25 total that season. Uh, and this Jake Fowler guy, who's now 37 years old, went on to play in the Premier League quite a lot for Norwich and then has gone on a, uh, a bit of a worldwide tour to Ukraine and South Korea. But at this stage, that's over over a decade ago now for the club. So it's been a long time since they've sold players for big money. I mean, look at that, 56, 57. They sold 51 million pounds worth of players. And some of the, oh, they've all retired now. We can't click on these players anymore, uh, which is a bit of a shame, I suppose. But this guy, Paul Freeman, is still kicking around at 40, 40 years old at Rochdale. What a career he's had. But interestingly, didn't come through Dagenham's own youth system. Looking at their squad as well, uh, they have n only one player with five-star potential, so they really are dropping in terms of potentiality. They're just not producing those Wonder Kid stars again, and that's probably a consequence of not having the top facilities anymore. So what we've seen today shows how powerful facilities can be in the rise and fall of clubs. Great facilities can yield some fantastic results, but as soon as they drop off, clubs can also drop off as well. But left to the club's own devices and given £1 billion, will they develop their facilities for the long run or will they just splash the cash and then drop off like a stone afterwards? Watch the video on screen right now to find out exactly what happens in that scenario.